If the zip line snaps, would you scream? I don't know if it's about the opportunity. It's it seems more like you would just do what you're gonna do. Like I don't like I don't know that we know how we're gonna react in a situation like that on our final fall. Mm-hmm. You know, and like you see a video of someone like dying parasailing or something or whatever, and right before they crash, you so you usually hear this like really gruesome. Rah! So I don't know. I don't know what I would do, but. Hopefully, I'd be graceful about it. What's graceful? It's not saying shit. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no? Did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Guys, welcome back. Oops, the podcast. Julio Gallarotti, your loyal friend and companion. And Ryan Lynch, me. Our, our other loyal friend and companion. Mine, yours, man of the world, a man getting out there and doing it. A little traveler, maybe. Ryan just went on a great vacation, it seems. I haven't heard much about it because we're saving it for the pod. I want to catch up. I have lots of questions. I want to hear all about it. Look, guys, sometimes you need a vacation. You just need a vacation. You get out there. It gives you time to reset. I know for me, I, I, I need one potentially. Now, sometimes I get fooled because I travel a lot and I do a lot of stuff that I like, but it's different than a vacation. I need to take a vacation at some point. I don't know when that's going to be, but I want to. But at, at the very least, it's nice that we will get to live vicariously through Ryan and hear about his vacation. But I want to talk more about the concept of vacation before we get into this, Ryan. Yeah, I agree. I agree with everything that you said so far. Uh, it's great. It gives you that spark back and it allows you to have that energy you need to focus and push forward in your career and your life. Uh, and that hitting that reset button, what a nice thing. Uh, and suddenly a lot of your problems maybe don't seem as bad once you get back. And obviously it's a privilege to be able to take vacation. We don't all get to, and sometimes money's tight and you know, you just can't make it happen. So it is indeed a privilege, but if it's a privilege that you're able to give yourself, uh, we recommend doing it. Yeah, I agree. And I didn't realize until we went on this trip, the, the direct difference between traveling and vacation. Cause the last two trips that we went on, we went to Europe for both of them and we had an amazing time, but traveling is much different than vacation. For example, as Hill Dog likes to say, sorry to cut you off. Uh, she goes, I like vacation. You like trips. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I like vacation also, but noted. And there is a funny and valuable distinction there. So continue. So for example, like walking versus not big difference maker when it comes to traveling versus vacation. When we were in Europe, so much walking, the miles on my Apple watch just got Bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and larger numbers. This trip, not so much. A lot of just lounging. Hmm. Um, but I will say the two of us, we, we even have a, we have a difficult time doing nothing. The whole intention for the trip, besides our excursions, was to do nothing. Mm-hmm. And I th- we had a really tough time not doing anything. We both just need to be doing stuff. Yeah, jittery. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I know your girl, uh, Victoria, is doing a ton of running these days. She is an active person. Yeah, she's got the Brooklyn. I mean, she's got the New York half this weekend. Wow. So, yeah, so she's running a lot, but she didn't do any running really on this trip. Nice. Uh, she's good to go. But, yeah, we went to Costa Rica. We went to Nosara. Very nice. Which is a part of the Blue Zones. Mm. And let me tell you. Is the, it? Is it? It falls within that Blue Zone. It's huh? within the, I think it's Nicoya. I think oh, yeah, that's yeah. the name. Yeah, so it's within that region. Oh, wow. And so, my God, we blue zoned it up. And you watched that episode with the cowboy, right? Yes. With the old man. Yeah, the Costa Rica. Watch that show if you haven't watched it, guys. The Blue Zones show on Netflix. Very interesting and inspiring and just a, a fun watch. So keep going. Sorry. Yeah, no, I just, I've just come back with the, the Nasara perspective. Oh, yeah. Um, what, Pura Vida? Yeah, Pura Vida. <laughs> and, uh, you have a was, nice hue to you. Thank you. Yeah. I was going to wear a long sleeve, but I wanted to show off for the YouTubers yeah, that, great, you know, bro. and I didn't get sunburn either. Very responsible on this trip. I'll go bump for Ryan's tan. Thank you. So we flew into Liberia, mm-hmm. Liberia airport. Then Jet we, Blue, right? we flew in JetBlue. Let us let the record show Ryan that you had told us other information. The last I think time. I said Delta. You did. Yeah. I'll be honest. I, <laughs> before trips, I don't look at the itinerary. Victoria was in charge of booking all of this and 
By the way, most people don't. So in case that you you shouldn't feel bad about that. That's me being weird, not you being That's weird. That's okay. I don't feel Yeah, I think you feel weirder than I feel about that. I don't feel weird, but I know that I am weird. Yeah. But it's also good to point out that that was yes. a, a misspeak on the previous episode. But um, <laughs> That only I was paying attention to. Yeah. So I didn't even know how far away the flight was going to be mm. until like the day up. I thought it was going to be like three hours. It's it was further, closer right? to six, just, just, just shy of six hours. Um, we get in. And we have a two and a half hour uh, taxi ride to get to Nosara. Mm. And we hit so much traffic. Mm. And the final leg, of, so it took about half. An, uh, was it expensive? I think it was about 150 bucks each way total. Oh, damn. Wait, uh, no, so 300 total? $300 total for the taxi service to and from the airport. And it took us about three and a half hours to end up getting where we needed to go. And the last 45 minutes was just the bumpiest ride ever. Like no paved roads. Mm. It was, it was nauseating that feeling you get after a a weekend away with friends, whether it's like a bachelor party or a wedding weekend, uh, that nauseating hung hangover feeling that you wake up with when Mm. you're on your way to the airport. We had that except we didn't drink. So it was not fair. Was it, was the car properly air conditioned? Yes. That's good at least. Yeah. The, but but yeah, I think that, you know, you drive on a dirt road in America, you know, maybe some people more than others, but like when you're on a dirt road, A, it's typically usually like either a good dirt road or a short dirt road. Traveling long distances on a dirt road takes fucking forever, dude. Mm-hmm. It takes forever. So, and I understand because, you know, I've, I've been to some spots where there's not a lot of paved roads and, uh, you know, it makes driving way less pleasant. So I feel for you there. Yeah. So after, after that, we got out and we got into our Airbnb. And what time, what time are we talking? Um, we got, uh, we got there around eight o'clock. Okay. And the flight, so the, when was it, like 10? Our flight took off at 10. Okay. And we ended up getting to our spot at 8. Long so day. So it was a full day. Long a full day. day of travel. Um, but our Airbnb host, she was in the unit right above us. Mm. And we know her through family, friends. And she hooked us up with every reservation wow. for every single night. We didn't have to do any research. We didn't have to worry about booking anything every single dinner was taken care of for us she had a booklet uh for all of her guests to to look through for yoga classes and surfing spot recommendations and lunch recommendations is she an expat sorry is she an expat i have no idea what that word is okay an expat is a person who you like you used to live in another country and now has moved elsewhere i think we should look up the definition but like meaning is she american she's american but she lives there uh, not full time. Oh, okay. It's like a vacation home for them that oh, they rent cool, out. Cool. So they have three units. That's great. And it's right on the water. So we really lucked out because wherever they lived, we would have went there because they gave us a discount. Oh, and great, fortunate, great, great, fortunately great. for us, it was right on the water. Amazing. Um, but yeah, so that like that that was the best. That was one of the best parts. Everything was taken care of for us. And after going to the first restaurant, we were like, "This is amazing." We were like, "She hooked it up." Like mm. we really are not. No, no stone is going unturned right. in terms of uh, she was there? the experience. She was there, yeah. She was in the unit above us. We just kind of bumped into her a couple times. She showed us how to use the washing machine. And, so it wasn't and a problem. she dipped. No, not at all. Nice. What do you mean by a problem? Like I don't know. Like There's been times where, and I'm not saying that it's not a good call to do it this way. It sounds perfect, like amazing. And I'm definitely open to doing it that way. The only thing I sometimes worry about especially if I don't personally know the Airbnb host, like is if they're going to be monitoring me in some mm. way. And that has happened to me before. And it's weird. Yeah. Like when I was in Africa, we stayed in an Airbnb. It was really nice. Um, and same kind of deal. Like the guy lived on the property. So like one of the first nights we were there, we went to this party. I end up meeting a nice young lady, a nice local young lady. And she came back to the house and she spent the night. Mm. Now, when I got, then we went on that like hike, which I've talked about on the show a bunch of times on this like crazy hike in Africa, blah, 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 hung over this and that. When I got back, I got like yelled at by the guy. He's like, you can't bring local people here. It's for your own safety, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And like, maybe that's all true or whatever, but this person was perfectly nice. There was no problems at all. Like, 
And it annoyed me that I had like a fucking chaperone. You know what I mean? I had somebody telling me what I could and couldn't do on my trip where I'm paying. I'm like, bro, fuck off. You know? Yeah, I'd hate that. Um, but, you know, whatever. So I just always worry about that with Airbnbs. Like Foley and Kevin Ryan from Are You Garbage have a famous story about this. Like the dude caught them smoking cigs or something, but they weren't even oh, smoking yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah. They did, did they tell the story on our yeah, show? Yeah, on our show they shared that. So, dude, I was like, what the fuck? So, anyway, I sometimes worry about Airbnbs because there is sort of a, a, a wide enough range of possibilities that it like adds a little extra layer of anxiety for me, mm -hmm. but they're typically fine and great. And when it works out, it's amazing. You have your own house and, and you guys had a good setup. I mean, like I'm not criticizing that decision. Like, no, not at all. Um, I, I it made, would it made sense. Yeah. I, I would, I would hate that. I feel like I'm under surveillance yeah, dude. Uh, the whole time. Yeah. Wasn't the case for us. She was only a net positive in every aspect when, uh, our, our flight was a little delayed and we hit the traffic and we were going to miss our first reservation uh, on the night that we flew in. And so we just let her know she canceled that reservation and made us a new one at a different restaurant. So like she just was she basically was just like what like she was a human Siri. And, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and I mean that in the nicest way to, to her because she's a human. Hey, Siri, can you change our <laughs> reservation? But literally she yeah. she went above and beyond for like anything. We were like asking little questions and she had answers right away on WhatsApp. She was just letting us know everything. That's great. Um, so it was fantastic. How it, far was the ocean? A uh, seven minute walk. Nice. Seven minute walk. But like when we left, when we closed the door, we're like downtown on like the main strip mm. with all the restaurants and all the smoothie shops and the surf shops. Yeah. It's so sick. Down and there. I think one of the coolest things about this particular trip was that it was not crowded. There were mm. there were people there. I mean, it was, you know, a full on vacation spot and community, but it was not like a Disney World. And I know that's an extreme comparison, but from my experience, I've gone to Disney a lot, I've gone to Atlantis a lot. That's just Those are your two spots. Those are just my spots growing up. And to walk out and just have all this space to yourself and the quiet it was amazing. That was the best part of the trip. And I wasn't thinking about that or getting excited about the prospect of that before the trip. Was this time that you chose to go, did, you, did she mention anything about that? Like, she's like, oh, it's slower than usual. Or is it just kind of like, this is how it typically is? No, it's just how it typically is. So we went during high season. So that's when, you know, just very warm. I think between April and I think April and May, it's raining all yeah, the time yeah. and then it stops again for a little bit. But we went during like the best time, one of the most popular times to go. That being said, Interesting. still like Great. just like not that busy. Yeah. And realize how much I hate people until I went to this yeah. trip and we like just just had this felt like this little slice of paradise all to ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it, interesting. It was fantastic. Man. Yeah, these uh, some of these the, the thing I always I found interesting about Nosara, I didn't stay there, but I went for the day with my dad when we went together on our little father son bonding trip. Um, there's a lot of like cool, zany, like oh natural, but also like hot, like sixty year old women. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Vic, Vic did not. Vic, <laughs> like I couldn't not. Like I was like Vic, look at that mom. Yeah, yeah. Like, cause like I was like, I don't know. I was like, Vic, come on, look at her. Beautiful, yeah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people uh, yeah. there. So like, yeah, we, we both are like, you know, like she's beautiful. She's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and the local together. people too, but like, yeah, just the mix. And then also, but it's, they're like crunchy, but not in that like rock climbing way. Like they don't have, they don't look like they have unreasonable amounts of upper body strength the way that I would associate with a quote crunchy person mm -hmm. like a hiking area like camping mountain this is more of like sun beach yoga clean eating healthy mm -hmm. lifestyle like the blue zone thing and it's cool that they've adopted the you you posted a picture uh saying that julia was going to be upset about the blue zone thing which i was i was upset uh but it was that was fun still it for was, us yeah uh, <laughs> um but yeah, it's nice that they've been able to sort of like capitalize on that because that's always been one of their things there. That Pura Vida thing is like the Costa Rica like thing, the right? The vibe. Guys, if you're looking to up your sock game, 
or you're looking to get into the compression sock game, we highly recommend heading over to Dr. Motion Socks and checking out some of their compression socks. I didn't realize this before, but compression socks actually have value to how the rest of your leg that is underneath the sock feels. And just your entire blood flow for your body. Like by squeezing, it sort of like releases the ankle and the feet and the joints and it just makes everything flow and feel wonderful. Ever since I've been wearing Dr. Motion compression socks, my legs and my entire body have felt much better. And that's actually helpful because the where, where my apartment is situated, I can take a train to transfer to another train if I'm trying to get to the comedy club, but it takes the same amount of time to just walk. And it's kind of a long walk, but it's nice to have this long baked in walk into my daily activities. And it's just good to be prepped up with the right socks to start adding on, you know, miles of walking a day that you're not used to initially. So shout out to Dr. Motion for that. I've had socks in the past that like pill by the toe and you know, it's just, they're, they're not comfortable when you try to put them on your sneaker. These are smooth. They're breathable. Mm. Um, I wish that I knew about them sooner because, uh, I wouldn't have so many feet problems if I didn't have them earlier. Totally. They're great. And they have all sorts of different styles, high, low, medium, different kinds of stuff you might need. They even have sort of like a compression sock that only goes along your leg and not even on your feet. And they also have socks that are specified for people with diabetes. Uh, to kind of make that a more comfortable experience if that is something that you are suffering from. But anyway, anything that you might need from your socks, Dr. Motion has you covered. So visit the website, drmotionsocks.com to check out the products and explore the new collection. That's D-R-M-O-T-I-O-N socks.com. So our first excursion was so a- excursion, meaning like somebody picks you up and then you go do something. Yes. Okay. We went zip lining. Cool. And we've never done that before. And I hate heights, but it's just like we're there. It's one of the top things to do. So let's do it. So we go to the hotel where they take us. We're getting shipped out with a couple other parties. And we're harnessed up. And we take about a 20-minute trek up this mountain. And very quickly, we just start. Like yeah. there was no crazy uh, tutorial. We just start. And that's when we started to get a little nervous because we were really high up. And I just was nervous that like I was going to do something wrong that would enable right. the latch to go loose and, and so you would perish to, to die. And people die on this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So but the one <laughs> thing that made me not so nervous was that there was a five year old boy there nice. with his mommy. And it was his second time doing it. Oh, nice. And so I, I asked him, I'm like, you've done this before, right? But like not in a cute way. I was very nervous. You were scared. Did he, did he sense your fear? No. I like, I like, you can't touch a kid that you don't know. But like I waited for him to look at me and then I initiated. And then you like, touched him. And then, <laughs> and then I touched him. Uh, I was just like, I'm like, how is this dude? I was trying to act like he was a peer. Because right, right, honestly, right. I was the inferior to him. He was my superior with all the experience he had. And he was like, yeah, it was super fun when I did it last time. And uh, you know, no, you no, just, that? Can, you, can you do that again? Yeah, it was super fun. I did it last time with my mommy. My daddy was here. He wasn't here. He's not here this time. Oh, yeah, fun. And so, like, confidence. Nice. This kid was oozing confidence. And so he was the first one to go. He went with the zipline people. And it was funny. The zipline people would just, like, pop around and go station to station. And they were always, they were just, like, kind of dispersed. Like a, yeah, they're like, they're like uh, orangutans. They're yes, like they flat. are like orangutans. It's and crazy. They, they would just, you know, they did everything that they told us not to do. Right. Like they would say, don't hold this, don't touch that. You need to keep your hands on the bars. We had to wear these leather gloves with mm. these little uh, cusps on them to slow it down. When they went down, they just like jumped and they just dove and they weren't <laughs> doing, they were doing the opposite of what we said. Mm. We go down the first zip line. It was terrifying, but it was beautiful. <laughs> and you I were scared actually. Um, well, Victoria was more, was very scared. And so I had to act like, you know, a big, strong man about it. Okay. And I was like, we're fine. We're fine. I knew we were going to be safe. You were less scared because you were in protector mode. Yeah. That. And also a five-year-old just did it. And like, helpful. I'm not like, I, there's a five-year-old here. I'm not going to die when mm -hmm. a five-year-old's here. I've always had this thought process as a kid. Whenever I was scared at night, I would always tell myself as I'm turning the TV on, that no one's gonna break into our home and murder us while the sweet life of Zach and Cody's on the TV. Like, no, there's no reality in which 
a bad guy, a monster, or a pedophile is going to come attack me when Disney Channel's on. So that was that's what you what you told yourself. Yeah. Also, when I'm boarding an airplane and I'm anxious about the weather, or I'm just feeling particularly anxious because I haven't flown in a while, the more young kids that I see, the more safe I feel that nothing bad's going to happen. Why would God? let this happen when there's all these children on a plane interesting so that's 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 just my mindset so when the little boy went i kind of my my anxieties were relieved because he mm-hmm. made it and we're going to be okay and i'm going to see him and give him a high five and so as we're going down uh, let me just i think we all agree that that makes no sense <laughs> however <laughs> however no but, me. but we need no but it's a you bring up a good point like you need to find <laughs> the things that make you feel better, whether they make sense or not. Like when I'm in really bad turbulence, I don't like to look at stuff. I like stop. Look, I won't look at my phone. I won't. And I just like, and it makes me feel better. Yeah. So if you can find those coping mechanisms, even if they don't actually do anything, you got to find them. Yeah. So I'm glad you were able to do that. Right? Honestly, whenever there's children around, I'm, I'm so much less nervous about bad things happening. <laughs> um, but that's just how it be. Terrible things happen to children all the time. Right? <laughs> and I know, and I know, and I know that, <laughs> but I still, I still stick to that thought process. So I'm going down and I was just nervous that the zip line was going to just snap. Mm. And I, I thought to myself, because I'm going before Victoria and she can see me. She can like, uh, it, it was a shorter one. The first one was short. And I'm thinking to myself, if this thing snaps and I fall, this one was about like 400 feet above the ground 400 feet yeah that wasn't Whoa, even the tallest that's crazy see this is like that's is this like the best zip line in the country or something i think in the area i'm not that's too, too sure it's the best one that we could do on this 400 trip. feet that's wild so i'm thinking to myself if the zip line snaps you know you you accept death you're done do you like do you think you have it in you to scream would you scream i don't know like if you could would you well, I don't know, like, I don't know if it's about the opportunity. It's more, it seems more like you would just do what you're going to do. Like, I don't, like, I don't know that we know how we're going to react in a situation like that on our final fall, mm-hmm. you know? And like, you see a video of someone like dying parasailing or something or whatever. And right before they crash, you so, you usually hear this like really gruesome. Yeah. S- yeah. You know? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what I would do, but. Hopefully, I'd be graceful about it. And what, what, what what's graceful? It's not saying shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think too. I think I think the the manlier thing to do is to not scream. Yeah. Um. So you were considering what, how you were going to dismount? Yeah, but from I get, life. But yeah, I think I'd be in such total shock. I don't know if I'd be able even to get a scream out. Yeah. And I don't I don't want to scream because I feel like. Victoria, like the last thing that she sees of me, or she she would have that sound in her head forever, and I think that's like an unattractive way to remember somebody. Them screaming like a little boy. Yeah, well, she's in her rocking chair looking out the window <laughs> for the rest of her life. <laughs> Dude, uh, I don't think I'd be willing to relinquish like until I was fully fucking dead. Like as I was falling, I'd be trying to grab onto shit, like even though obviously it wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. work. Yeah, um, and I think I think it was funny that we, we wore helmets. I don't think you really need to wear a helmet when you're 400 feet above. Yeah. When you land on your head, like you stick a a, yo, um, a gymnastics landing. I don't think it works right, that way. Right. Unless some fucking monkeys throwing shit at you or something. Yeah. So um, we, we survived. So we actually, the tallest one that we did was 900 feet. What? It was over 900 feet. That's sick, dude. And the, the guys running it started to have a little fun with it. And they would double us up. 900 feet 900 feet i have it on video uh let me see this i nine you're positive about 900 feet that yeah that that, is like how tall is the empire state building dude i don't know but king to ka king to ka which was once the tallest roller coaster in the world is i believe just over 500 feet yeah so this yeah king to ka is still the tallest roller coaster in the world i think i think in a different country there's a taller taller one? one yeah really yeah it's just one of those things though that's so scary the empire state building is 1250 feet yeah so almost there damn there's this video that's crazy so victoria and i went down together on the 900 foot one the guy was like all right you could do together together and uh that's a good way to do it where is it was she scared we both were scared 
So he is coming down with us and he's just recording. He's like, give me your phone. I take video. And uh, here we go. You'll see now it's about to open up. And the video does it just a little bit of justice. Um, the depth is right. kind of hard to, to gauge. Um, but I mean, this is like, here we go. It opens up right here. Like wow. such a high quality video. He's going to pan out and show the rest. But it was stunning. And there are parts where it's not trees at the bottom. Like it's just straight up points between you, 900 feet, and the ground. Did you make a point not to look down? Bro, this does not look like 900 feet. It is 900 feet. <laughs> <laughs> it is 900 this feet. This is fully, are you sure you don't mean 90 feet? <laughs> I believe you. No, I know that like the cloud forest, like the canopy is like a thing and it's the rainforest. So I'm sure it was, but that's what, that's wild. It was. Now this video <laughs> is beautiful. we, this, this run was a little over a minute and this guy had the camera in our face the whole time. And I was very uncomfortable by that because I didn't get like all of this, <laughs> all of, all of my facial. Can we play this in the video? Yeah. Cool. Every, I'll uh, play the audio. Every, no, 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 I'm saying like, in oh this yeah, yeah. Everything that I did was fake. I didn't, I couldn't be myself. Right. The, the way he was recording it made it seem like he was expecting us to hoot and holler and cheer and woohoo and oh my God. And this is crazy. And Victoria, unfortunately, she has uh, there's an unobstructed view of her the entire time so she's she told me later on that she was kind of acting too and oh, i just nice. didn't we just it was great to get the video but he was like come on come yeah, on say yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah, we were monkeys yeah, yeah, yeah. you and, start just like feeling pressure to behave a certain yeah way. i think 30 seconds in i let out a big woohoo and then i felt terrible about myself for like the last 15 <laughs> seconds of the ride but yeah it was oh wait and this guy Looks like this guy's ziplining to the next station. Oh, <laughs> Hilarious! Well, that was a bird. Yeah. So we're we're cool. going down. We're going down fourteen of these, and the little boy's not allowed to go by himself. And they they kept saying that, and they were serious and not joking about it. How many people were in your group? Your ziplining mm, group. Fifteen. Okay. We had uh, an older couple from North Carolina, mm. and then uh, a mother and the little boy from uh, Yellowstone. They're from Yellowstone. Yeah, and they have pet pigs, and like from the that area. Yeah, yeah, and and then the rest was a big group from Germany. Nice, nice. yeah. So it was a good squad. Good squad. A lot of fun, yeah. laughter. I didn't realize that when you zip line, you do it a bunch of s consecutive times. Yeah, we, I always did, I thought it was just like you do it one time and that's it. That's what we thought. We yeah. didn't we didn't know what to expect. So we it's were really happy that we course. got to do fourteen of them. Yeah, it was like a high elements course that you do for like group bonding. Nice. Say on the tenth one, the little boy, they just picked him up, they attached him to the zipline, and they just threw him out all by himself. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. And he didn't know what was going on, so he's just sitting there, and uh, he's not allowed to hold the handlebars. So when you're not holding the handlebars, you spin. And so he he doesn't know that he's alone. He thinks he's with one of the guys, and he turns around. And you just see his like mouth open a little bit and he's just shocked because he's somewhere between 600 and 500 feet above the ground all by himself. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a VR course. That's cool. Um, but it was lovely. It was cool. great. That was a fun excursion. That reminds me, this uh, this guy, Sandy Danto, a good friend of mine, comic. Uh, if you guys were at the San Diego show, you might have seen him there. Um, he, he has this video of him. He's open for Pauly Shore for many years mm. and he was in the mall of America and he was going to bungee jump. And I guess they like pushed him off the thing before he was ready. So he like, which is insane. There's a video of this and he's, you see him like panicking as he's falling. Cause he thinks that like, he's not attached. Mm -hmm. So Can that's them, fu that's them fucking with him. Yes. Which is sim. I mean, it seems not as severe as what they did to this little kid, but it sounds like the little kid was not expecting that. Yeah. I think that's worse though. Thinking that something's not right it's as crazy. opposed to just being thrown out there. It's crazy, bro. I'd hate that. I would never bungee jump. I can't do that. Yeah. I'm not that into it either. And also just like even jumping off of too high of stuff into water. Like there's a, there's a po photo of me jumping off of this big cliff in Greece. And, uh, when I hit the water, my like hands, like, violently jerked back and i was like 
okay, I don't want to ever jump from higher than than this because like I don't want to have to depend on perfect technique. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel like I've had literally no time lately between work stuff and moving. Like simply, absolutely no chance of going to the grocery store, which is why it's amazing that Factor meals exist. Quick, easy, delicious, nice variety, nutritious, all the good stuff. Factor is where it's at. Thank God, dude. Thank God. Makes life so much easier. Meals are ready literally in two minutes. Uh, cover all the bases for you. And it just, it comes in such a compact way too. Like the amount of food you get in the box. It's like, oh wow. I'm amazed they were able to, I like, I'm like, is there another shipment coming? No, it's just like perfectly set up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that you have everything that you need to eat and get on with your day. Uh, you know, we're all... I don't know how specifically old people listening to the show are right now. I have an idea based on some of the demographics, but chances are you're busy and you don't have time to cook a lot of the time. And that's why Factor has you covered. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast upscale options done easily. Flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing 6 to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Head to factormeals.com slash oops50 and use code oops50 to get 50% off. That's code oops50 at factormeals.com slash oops50 to get 50% off. So so your travel day, you did you guys take an Uber? Yes. Terminal 5 JFK? Yes. As you knew, because <laughs> you knew I was flying JetBlue. I said in the podcast I was flying Delta. That was a mistake. You must have known that I was flying JetBlue because of the Starbucks Instagram story that I had posted. When you posted the Starbucks, I was like, that looks like Terminal 5. Yeah, you know your And then I realized you were flying JetBlue. Yeah. Um, So yeah, we flew Jet... Yeah, we went to Terminal 5 from an Uber. This is JFK we're talking about. There are eight terminals at JFK. (laughs) Two of them are not active. So there's technically six. Are those the new ones? There's no Terminal 3. There's no Terminal 6. There's Terminal 1, which is probably... Terminal 1 and 2 are the shittiest. One is like random international airlines. Two is like, I don't know, like shitty domestic ones. Four is the Delta Terminal. Five is JetBlue. Uh, there is no six. Seven, I think is a, seven or eight is American and then British and British. It's like a flip flop of those two. But then like Alaskan will be in one of those two also. I haven't flown seven or eight that many times. Mm. Not that anybody gives a fuck about this. Um, okay, so you, so zip line. You guys, it sounds like you you were trying to plan something where it was like a uh, kind of tiring activity one day and then chilling the next day. Yes. So what did the chilling days look like? Were they similar? Like, did you find a groove? Do you have a, a typical itinerary you like to adhere to? No, we would wake up really early. So that was that on, on all of the days. So we'd get up around like six. Is it two hours behind? One hour. Okay. Um, but then we had daylight savings, but that that's, oh, yeah. that that was just Fucking a perfect storm savings. for travel day. Fucking daylight savings. But we uh, we'd get up at six, and then we would get our complimentary breakfast, mm. which we were able to do because our Airbnb hosts at a restaurant. Wonderful. Then we would walk along the beach, and then we would try to walk around Nosara and get some coffee and do some shady touristy activities. Between the hours of 10 and 2. Wait, what do you mean shady touristy activities? Sorry, sh- oh, in shady, the shade. shady as in shaded. The UV yeah, index yeah, yeah, yeah. was at, at a 13 at noon. And is that really high? I think 15 is the highest it can go. So we like we did not want to be near the sun. It was so hot. It was so hot. Dude, uh, you want to hear something? Dan- speaking of UV index, Danny Palmer was bragging to me about how he wears sunglasses in the car. Because he thinks it, it it like still guards the UV rays or whatever, and I was like, oh, interesting. I was like, you know that the windshield also provides protection from UV rays too, right? And he's like, really? And I go, yeah. And he goes, I'm just gonna fact check that real quick. And he <laughs> fact checks me as he's sitting in the car with his glasses on. With his, I don't know if he may have <laughs> taken them off. He's asking ChatGPT, who's his new best friend, about, and then ChatGPT confirmed that I was right. And then he's like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, dude, you realize how annoying that is, right? You really how fuck, realize how fucking annoying that just was. That he didn't trust you? Or that the Bro, fact that he, he's wearing sunglasses for UV protection in no, the car? No, the fact that he is fact-checking me while I'm sitting there, telling me that he's fact-checking me. Bro, like, can, you, can fa- you can subtly fact-check me without saying, I'm fact-checking you. 
Right, like I mean, that, that. That gives like the I want to punch you in the fucking throat. Like what? Type of urge. What? Just he, like the idea that someone hasn't heard something, therefore it must not be true or something, mm -hmm. is annoying. Like if I say something, like I have a, a reasonably good rapport with him, or in general, like if I say a fact, typically I'm I'm not just gonna like say things that aren't true. Mm -hmm. Although my mom has told me she has a friend who makes stuff up, and she will fact check her, but she doesn't tell her. Yeah. And then maybe, maybe later she'll mention it somehow. But like, there's this way to smoothly fact check your friends if you don't believe what they're saying. Isn't Danny's whole mantra about good vibes? I know, not good That's vibes. Very bad vibes. Very bad vibes. But no, dude, like you, like you could be like, dude, that's not true. But like, what I'm saying just isn't that controversial. It's just like a standard statement. Mm -hmm. And like, the idea that a person can have a lapse in their knowledge and therefore just assume that things must not be true, frustrating. That is frustrating. Anyway, so one one unique thing about Costa Rica, in my opinion, that makes it nice is like, it's one of the only places that I can think of in sort of like South and Central America that has like, that you can just sort of like freely roam around the entire country and never have to really worry is the vibe that I get. I'm sure that there's prickly areas, but like in general. So like you can walk around the town you can, and you can get, it kind of feels like LA a little bit. No, mm. sorry. Like from a menu perspective, like you can get your iced coffee, you can get oat oh, milk. Oh, a hundred percent. Like you can't get oat milk every everywhere. Like I, don't know, I guess like big cities probably have it everywhere, but like you, you know, you know what I'm saying. It was like clean eating. Yeah, Nosara seemed a little gentrified. Yeah, exactly. Like when That's we got off, when, right when we got back on the pavement, I could smell like the new Brooklyn. Like right, it was, right, right, it was right. like it was like Brooklyn Beach. Right, even like the way that like Tulum, the way Brooklyn Beach is hilarious. Coney, imagine Coney Island just turns. Coney, we wish. Oh no, not no. Like, I know, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. East River, Brooklyn Beach. Brooklyn inspired <laughs> beach. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but no, dude, a hundred percent. Like you can get all the stuff that you want to get, and uh, yeah, not to be a brat. I was I was ecstatic, dude. It was like paradise. It's like Tulum, kind of. It was you know acai bowls. Yeah. Dude. Almond milk, peanut butter, ice cold brew, coffee, all the buzzwords that Delicious. get me hard. It was it was fantastic. Everything was so good. I looked the one bit of research that I did before the trip, uh, I searched on Reddit for how the food was. Mm. And but I, I asked I did a generic Costa Rican search and the top responses were, eh, it's fine. Nothing special. There wasn't a bad meal. Right. Even even the tiny little lunches and we didn't we didn't just go to like like we went to like the little huts and we got like the rice and beans. Everything was fantastic. It's great, bro. And uh they had surf schools, they had Did these... you did you surf? We did surf. How's your surfing? It was pretty solid. A lot of a lot of people are pushing for us to take like surf lessons and things like that. I think you can just figure it out. We rented a board and we just did it. Really? You were successfully surfing. Yeah, I think I think by my on my third attempt, I was able to do it. You were standing on a surfboard and surfing. Yes. Wow. Yeah, Vic has pecs. We we brought a digital camera. Nice. Uh, That's smart. Yeah. So it's gonna look really vintage. But yeah, when surfing, Vic went. She did it on her second attempt. Wow. And so you were just like swimming on the board and then standing up once the wave got right behind you, type of deal. Yeah. Just yeah. like just like you do what you think you should do. I don't think it's that hard. I see these I see these turkeys on the, on the beach. These like men, these older men, like practicing swimming on like a fake surfboard that the instructor like etched out with oh, a stick God. on the sand. I'm like, you look like a, a loser. <laughs> just do it. It's not. It wasn't that hard. Yeah, that's like forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yeah. Do nothing. Yes. Okay, yes. You got to do something. Yeah, Paul Rudd. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it's it's you know we didn't I didn't uh, go crazy didn't go full uh x games out there i just did regular <laughs> slater regular runs but <laughs> it was cool it was fun julio i got a lot of bachelor parties this year really and a lot of them are including some time that we're gonna be spending on the golf course oh nice now, dude. i don't i don't know about you but when i step up to the first tee box i'm always looking for just a little oomph to get me in the zone oh, get nice. me focused um some of my friends drink some of my friends smoke but for me when I'm holding my driver and I am approaching the golf ball, there's nothing better than right before I pull back for my swing to just on my Lucy breaker oh, and just yeah. get that pop. Hell yeah. It just gets me going. It gets me in the zone. It's just what I like to do. And I bet a lot of you out there when you're looking for your nicotine fix are looking for something like that as well. To each their own. To us, it's Lucy. 
hundred percent, man. Couldn't have said it better. I love throwing a Lucy breaker in feeling that pop and getting that hundred percent nicotine tobacco free satisfaction flowing through the body. Uh, they have varying strengths depending on what your preference is and all the great flavors. Uh, you know, they have mango and mint as well as apple, ice, and espresso espresso flavor, uh, which are a little more artisanal, I would say. It goes great with your morning coffee. It's a big word. Uh, you just simply love to see it, Ryan. Lucy is where it's at for all of your nicotine needs. So let's level up your nicotine routine with Lucy. Go to lucy.co slash oops and use promo code oops to get 20% off your first order. Lucy offers free shipping and has a 30-day refund policy if you change your mind. That's lucy.co and use code oops to get 20% off and always free shipping. And here comes the fine print. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age and every order is age verified. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. We did a coffee tour. Oh, yeah. So those are your two activities, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these were our activities. So on the coffee tour, we had no idea what to expect. We thought that we might be going to a large field, a factory, and mm -hmm. you know, speaking with people in lab coats. And that wasn't the case. We took an ATV 45 minutes up uh, a mountain, and we go to this guy's home, and then he just walks into his backyard with a machete, and he's just making our way to the coffee spot. He's cutting down bananas, cutting down oranges, cutting down avocados. He's showing us his land, and they grow like tens of thousands of avocados, 40,000 oranges a crop. Like, wow. it, it was it was, it was was insane, and then wow. we got to eat all of it. It was delicious. Sure. We got this private tour, and this guy had acres on acres on acres of land. He basically had owned the whole mountain, which just crazy lifestyle. That This guy's just in there. And what's this guy's deal? Where's he from originally? He's a local. Cool. He's a local. And uh, we had the coffee beans, and they showed us how they made them, which they would pluck them off the tree. Then they would pick them out for which ones were the good ones. And then they put the beans into this big... Um, uh, what's the thing that you make guacamole in? A, br uh, a mortar? Mortar and pestle thing? Yeah. A big version of that and a big wooden stick. And you just pound it, sick. make it fine, and then you make the coffee. It was very good. That's sick, dude. Yeah. Very, very cool. And then, so like, he, he from start to finish made coffee for you guys, basically. Yeah. We was, like, it, was it like extra good? Or was it just like, I don't know, the same? Was it like, was it, did it taste a little like bitter? TBH, it was fine. <laughs> all the coffee was fine and I might I might be a coffee snob but like all the coffee was fine in Costa Rica that was like a big like selling point like you gotta go for the coffee beans bro it was fine mm. it was good it was fine right, right like this coffee is as good if not slightly better than all the coffee that we had in right, Costa Rica right, right. yeah I feel like a lot of places act like they have the best coffee actually which yeah. I've noticed it's like all right, do you maybe maybe not yeah um, well, that's good, dude. Yeah, was, and then, so you, how many nights were you there? We were there for five nights. Nice. And at some point, did you like get over the hump of like feeling like you needed, like, you know, the way that your work life sticks with you when you're like moving around, did you ever get past that where you like weren't thinking about work as much? Yeah, it was good. I think I, my screen time was zero for one full day. Wow. That's all I could do. One full day? One full day. You didn't look day. at your phone one time. No, uh, just in the morning for the alarm and at night to set it. Wow. One full day. That's great. I read a little bit. Nice. And What'd you read? Uh, Brian Cranston's memoir. Very nice. Yeah. I cracked like 45 pages, 50 pages, this, a lot of pages this weekend. It's a lot for me, yeah. It's a lot of pages. Yeah. Dude. I read a story about how uh, he had he lost his virginity to a prostitute. Really? Yeah. Brian's a crazy guy. Good for him, dude. Yeah. And... Uh, it was, it was super solid. It was our anniversary. So we spent, we've been together for eight years Wow! and I asked her out on her birthday, which she jokingly yet growingly hates because the birthday should be for her. But I somehow uh, made it a little bit about me. Interesting. That's funny. Yeah. That is very interesting. Yeah. So and then I think the last thing I don't want to complain but there was there we had a we had a bad situation at our last restaurant. Listen, dude, it's fine to not act as if everything was perfect. Nothing's completely perfect. Yeah, but I feel like 
I feel like I complain a lot, but I need to, I just need to share this one. This one sucked. Our last night was the best restaurant and I won't say what it, I won't say the name of it cause that's fucked up. But the, why? Cause you're in a bag on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the quote best restaurant, meaning like you're supposedly saving the best for last. Yeah, she, the lady that uh, that booked everything for us, she's like, I booked you guys the best restaurant, sunset, uh, waterfront view. We had the best seat at the best restaurant reserved, right? So we can see the sunset at 530. And so we were really excited. We get over there, we sit down, and we have this stunning view. It was, it was beautiful. And um, the server just like never came over. And we're sitting there for like 10 minutes. Then someone finally comes. We didn't get seated. We had to seat ourselves. We had to like find like, we found like a bus boy and we were like, hey, we're here for this. And he's like over there. We sit, we're just waiting. The waitress comes and she's like, what do you want? And that was the vibe. It was, what do you want? She said, what do you want? Yeah. And I'm, you know, it's busy restaurant, but I was just expecting a high or what would you like? What do you want? Mm. So that was that was red flag number one. Whatever we we ordered our drinks, they didn't come until thirty minutes later. Thirty minutes we're waiting for our drinks. Now the sun is almost set. We want to. Sun's gone. The sun is almost yeah. The sun is almost gone. It's like partially gone at this point. We finally get our drinks, and then they run away before we can throw in any of our our food orders. And so that was frustrating. Ugh. Another 45 minutes goes away. We don't order anything to eat until we're there for at least an hour and 20, an hour and a half. It's pitch black now. We're expecting to have, you know, a little hummus mm. and some carrots yeah. and some and some dips and some bread and baba ganoush, and, which uh, we did have baba In ganoush. general, was the service normal? Like, I, typically places are slower than America, which like is fine. But uh, was it was there anywhere where you waited a long time besides this one place? No, th- this this was like an outlier. Every, everywhere else was super chill and normal. Um, but when we were just disappointed because we were so excited because we've heard yeah, such dude. great things about this place. That's a bummer. And then our server just like, we just, we just wasn't with it. And so we wanted to order this pizza that had uh, anchovies and olives and capers on it. And we were really excited about it. And we're sitting there waiting 45 minutes to order it. And so we were going to order that. And then we were also going to order the catch of the day. Now, they also had a fish, which was the red snapper. That was the second fish item. Um, I didn't want red snapper, so I was curious to see what the catch of the day was. After 45 minutes, the waiter finally comes back and says, what do you want? Again, what do you want? What do you want? And I said, we'd like to start with this pizza, the, the, that one. And she's like, we're out of anchovies. Ugh. I wish you told us. I wish we knew so we wouldn't be excited about it the whole time. I didn't say that. But I was like, okay. And I said, what's the catch of the day? And she's like, we have red snapper. That's already a menu item. Am mm. I an asshole? The catch of the day thing, like, maybe. <laughs> I was I was mad. I was really mad, but I wasn't like, you know, no, like, freak out or anything. I understand the frustration of an item being gone, especially if you're sitting there for a long time. You can't help but wonder if it was there before. And it is nice, too, when they're like, hey, by the way, we're out of this, this, and this. Although I would say like a fair amount of the time, they don't tell you until you ask for it. So like, but I get that it compounded because of all the other stuff. So you were like anno- more annoyed than you might've been otherwise. Yeah. If they had just like come and asked you what you wanted occasionally. Yeah. yeah. So then we, we got a second round of drinks or we order a second round of drinks. Vic doesn't get it. She just doesn't get her drink, but I get my drink. Really? Just never. Got she just doesn't get it. And yeah. so, uh, we didn't even have a chance to, to like say, Hey, we didn't get the drink because they just like, boom. And then they ran away. And then it was our anniversary, so I called a few days earlier to let them know, like, hey, can you do something special for her birthday? I didn't want it to make it about her. So I didn't say anything about the anniversary, but, like, can you, like, bring out a dessert or anything for her birthday? And they were like, of course, we will do that for you. No problem. Happy birthday. And then I just knew that this waiter did not have the same – she didn't know what was going on. And so I went to go to the bathroom, and I went to to our waiter, and I said, hey – we have a birthday tonight. Can you please bring just something out for, you know, like a candle or something special for her? And then she says, what table? And I said, I was like, th- like right there. Like it's me, your, your person. And she was just like staring at me. And she was just like, she was just like, 
She's like, and what, what's this for? And what's this for with the head shake? And what's this for? The head shake, dude. She said, and what's this for? And what's this for? Oh, my God. And I was like, it's for her birthday. And then they brought something out. Jeez. So I don't know if I'm if I, if if I'm an ass. I I think it's fair. Sometimes like it doesn't I, go well at a restaurant, was and tone, it's fair to be angry about it. Was her tone actually as bad as you're making it sound? Yes. If it was, then that sucks, dude. It you, really was. You you caught a tough break. Yeah. What are you gonna do? So, and then, and I and I, I there was someone at a different restaurant that complained about their food, and Victoria and I were like, you should never complain about your food. But you know what? Sometimes like. Dude, right. you get excited about a place. Yes, bro. I'm no longer going to judge people uh, 100% without knowing the context if they send something back. There's probably a reason, and they pro- there's a breaking point for everybody uh, when, when something's not going well, and sometimes it's valid. Dude, listen, I get, like, it, it's hard to sort of be the person sending something back and, like, have anybody feel bad for you or, like, not look bad in that moment. And I'm not saying... You should be sending stuff back. I never sent you back. But like, yeah, this idea that like because people are working and serving you, you're just supposed to you're supposed to be cool with them doing whatever they want. Like you're paying to go to do a thing like it should at least be reasonable. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, yeah. OK, here's an example. And not, we're not just going to sit here and bitch about eating out all day <laughs> because it's obviously a nice thing to be able to do. But um, tell me what you think about this. I went to brunch. OK. And it wasn't like a special fancy brunch. I just wanted to have breakfast in the afternoon. It's one, we sit down at like one forty, Okay. And, uh, the waitress comes over. She gives us menu. She's really nice. We order seltzers. It's, it's taking a little while, but it's fine. We're, we're in no rush. Mm-hmm. So at one forty, I want to say at like one forty-five, we order seltzers. She brings them over at one fifty. We were like kind of ready to order, but we didn't feel the need to like chase her down. We end up ordering at one fifty-nine. And as I, we begin ordering, it becomes two. And she goes, I go, can I get like, you know, whatever, the omelet or something? And she's like, ooh, she's like, brunch ends at two. And I'm like, oh, really? Like, so I was like, just to be clear, I'm like, that's fine. But so if I ordered like 90 seconds ago, it would have been fine. And she said, yeah. And I was like, really? And she's like, yeah. I was like, okay, well. And then we sort of like, and she goes, well, I'll ask if they'll still do it. And I was like, okay, no problem. She goes and asks, and she's like, they said they wouldn't, they, they won't. And look, I, I, it's not like her fault. Like I watched the bartender be like, they won't do it. I watched her say that to her. So like that, that sucked for everybody. Uh, but my only point was like, you, you could have told us how strict they are with the policy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody would have won there and you know, whatever. Then I was, then I didn't want it. Then I didn't want to stay there anymore. I was like, I, you know, I, I just want breakfast. So then we just didn't, then we went somewhere else. Yeah. It's bad vibes. Is it That's like, it. am I like, I, we weren't a dick. We weren't a dick to her. Like we left a tip, like, which we didn't even have to do. But mm-hmm. Danny was like, we should leave a tip. And then, you know, I've j- I had just never seen something that dramatic. And he's like, we'll do to order something else. I'm like, why should I buy something else? I came for a specific thing and I don't want, so now I should just be like, oh, it's okay. Like, I don't, I don't need to do that. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, I, I wasn't a dick. I wasn't like, are you serious? Can I explain something to you? I didn't say shit. I was like, ah, okay, that's a bummer. I understand. I'm sorry. Like, we're, we maybe we're just going to go somewhere else. It's totally valid. You don't want to give off like passive mom energy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like we, Hillary and I were making the point that like, it would have been nice. Like it would have made sense for her to at least tell us that. And Danny then goes, oh, you've, you've, you guys have never been waiters before. And I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> like, because I've never been a waiter, I'm supposed to just buy things I don't want. I don't give a fuck about this person, dude. I have compassion for the fact that she's working at a job. I don't think it's like a job that deserves sympathy. Like, yeah. it's a job, bro. It's like, a, she's working. She's, she's making money. It's like, yeah. it doesn't require sympathy. I'm like, me being a waiter or not, to me, doesn't affect that fact. Like, if I were a waiter, actually, I would have been like, if these were my, if this was my table, I would have told them that there was that the guys in the kitchen are really rigid about the brunch, so you should order it now. And dude, the amount of times waiters have come over the table and been like, "If you guys want to put something in, the kitchen's closing." That is, I've heard that a million times. No, th- thanks, whatever. You know what I mean? It, it, it's a two-way street, dude. Mm-hmm. The diners aren't don't need to just take L's. 
Like everybody's in this together. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's part of the job is letting them know. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if, how anybody feels uh, about that. It's a tough hill to die on. Like any, it, just any person complaining about a, an experience where they were eating out, you know, they could be the most right ever. It's still like a difficult hill to die on. It is. You just look like a fucking dick. So whatever. It doesn't matter. I ended up getting breakfast. We went to Cracker Barrel, which was like not that good, to be honest. In general or that particular visit? I, I don't think I, I don't think I'd ever been. Hmm. Is, do you like the barrel? I barrel. You barrel? I've barreled before. Yeah, it was okay. It, was it okay. is what it is. It was okay. For what it is, very solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but like, it, it, you know, Danny's like, oh, you've never been to the Cracker Barrel. We got to hit it. <laughs> it was fine But it, I agreed It was like a bit of a novelty I was like oh, okay This is interesting There's a store And all this shit So whatever mm-hmm. uh, All in all Solid Dude I took a I took a really solid L During this During the week though um, We are obviously In the process of moving We're pretty much done It's been terrible But you know Everybody knows Moving is terrible But that still doesn't mean You shouldn't move You know It only takes A little bit of time And now suddenly You have this new spot and a new lease on life and some new vibrance to your life. So not moving because it's a pain is not a good reason. Not moving because it's expensive is a good reason. Mm-hmm. You know, if you just like don't feel like incurring this gigantic expense, even, you know, I made a video, got the move for free, uh, you know, besides the added costs on top, making the content, tipping the guys, great, you know, making sure they're taken care of. Um, but still, buying furniture, blah, 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 this and that. So we're finally almost settled. But the other night there was a dresser outside. Hillary had been doing a lot. So I wanted to contribute. It was pouring rain this day, this day in particular. Uh, so I get home. She's like, this dresser's outside. She's like, I'm in bed. You know, I have work in the morning, but you know, we'll figure it out. So I figure I'm going to be, I'm going to be a real one and I'm going to bring it in. So it's sort of underneath our stairs. So it's shielded from the rain, but the rain was so powerful. There's wind that like this box was soaking wet. And this box is taller than you. This box is like six foot three, probably. Wow. This is a big box. So I'm like, okay, how am I and going? it's a dresser. Yeah. This could have been a short film, bro. Me trying to bring this thing up the <laughs> stairs. So I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, how are we going to approach this? So I decide what I'm going to do is first I'm going to kind of like, I didn't want to call her to come out, but I didn't want to be in the rain all night either. It was starting to get damp. So I'm like, I'm doing this thing where I'm like moving it a little bit at a time. You know what I mean? Like from side to side, you get what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then my, my plan was I was going to put it on its side and slide it up the steps. If that were to be possible, it became clear kind of early that it wasn't going to be possible. The tape <laughs> kept getting caught on the stairs and the box was starting to fall apart a little bit. The box was starting to become uh, fragile because of how wet it was. So I was like, oh fuck, I don't want this box to break. Oh, that would suck. So anyway, I decide I'm going to maybe try to like lift it. I like put it on my foot and I, I can probably do this at this point. It's heavy, but if I take my time, I'll be able to do it. So we have in front of our house, we have like, it's probably seven steps and another seven steps. So like you walk straight and then you diagonally walk to the right. But it's like, they're, they're not like steep, but they're not not steep. Mm-hmm. So I'm probably four steps up or five steps up on the first set of stairs the bottom of the box bursts open and all the of all of the wood just starts flying out of the bottom boom 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 like like there was someone was shooting off firecrackers dude like 20 pieces of wood must have just flown down the stairs <laughs> in the pouring rain <laughs> no. and i'm standing there like trying to figure out what to do some dude walks by and like kind of chuckles and keeps walking and i was like <laughs> I'm like, damn, dude. I'm like, in Afghanistan, every single person would have helped me, dude. But honestly, though, it's like in any small town or small town vibe place, obviously people would help you. You don't help help in the city. You just never know. So not not that guy's fault. But anyway, so I'm standing there and Hillary finally comes out. She's like, are you okay? And she just sees what's happening. And I'm just like, I think the easiest way to do this is maybe you can just pick up those pieces of wood down here and then we'll try. We eventually get it inside, but it was like terrible. Then we like both got in bed and like didn't speak for five minutes. (laughs) Uh, it's been tough, dude. Uh, but you know, Hey, but the effort was there. The effort was there. She must've appreciated that. The apartment's nice. It's, it's, it's hard for me to kind of like transition into the next part of my work life since the past year or so has been so focused on my special, Mm -hmm. uh, not maybe, maybe more specifically the last six months. So I'm now like, now that the special is is moving past the point where there's anything that I need to do for it, I need to like 
write new jokes, figure out my next travel thing. It's just been hard for me to like organize my time, but I'm also in the middle of moving, have been in the middle of moving. So like that of course is taking up a lot of my time. So it's been a little disorienting, but I'm getting used to it. Yeah. Well, it's coming together. Nice. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the fi- the finished product of living here. Yeah. You know, and what my life is going to be like and hopefully the positive things that will come out of it. Um, you know, the apartment's more expensive, but hopefully that won't be something that I feel, you know what I mean? Hopefully things will go well for me and uh, we won't even have to think about it. So speaking of which, come see me on the road, guys. April 4th to the 6th, I'm in DC, the DC Comedy Loft. The 7th, I'm at the Punchline in Atlanta. Then I am at Comedy uh, House of Comedy in Detroit, 3rd and 4th of May. Laugh Boston, June 1st. Uh, I'm going to be in Portland, Oregon, June 19th. And then uh, in Los Angeles, finally, we'll have Pasadena at the Ice House. I think it's going to be August 3rd. Pasadena. I don't think those tickets are out yet, but filling up the sketch. Looking forward to seeing you guys at a show. Come on out. Uh, and I think, yeah, we could probably take it home from here, right? Yeah. Send us emails at oopsthepodcast at gmail.com. We got some good ones. We'll get to them soon uh, that you've sent in the past week. So thank you for that. Uh, check me out at Ryan is really polite on all socials. And yeah, we'll see you guys later. Adios.